Good morning. Oh shit, we're live to the world right now. My name is Vincent Valentine and you're tuning in to the, the, the Vincent Valentine show in English. It's totally free and it's in Barcelona. Hosted by truly yours, Vincent Valentine, the big dope from Manchester, who has really bad ADHD. Every week we have two very funny guests joining the show. If you're easily offended, please turn off now. The first guest we have this week is the amazing Lucia Miller. She's a comedian. Uh, she's performed for a lot of my shows here in Barcelona. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. She's all the way from Texas. So hello, Lucia. How are you doing? Hello, hello, Vincent. I'm uh, so glad to be here. Yeah, a bit drunk as well. A little bit, a little bit. He's pumped me full of alcohol, pumped Barcelona. You full of alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a paragraph that you sent over to me on Facebook before. Oh, some prose. Some. This is all about Lucia. Okay. Lucia Muller is a mind. Uh, is a, mo uh, is a montage of weird porn strangling pedestrians and performing folk songs live on stage. She's only, uh, she's only daylight to combine all three, but she teaches, as she could call teaching, some English to very young children. Is that correct? I don't know if I understood I don't know what you I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, the thing is that my, my mind is a just a montage of different things and yet I make my living by teaching young teaching children. children although uh, parts of that montage may contain inappropriate things yeah what type yeah. of stuff do you teach children I what what types of what type of subjects do you teach types of oh only English and you know the, the arts really so I think it's a uh, how to it's philosophy Sex yeah. education. Sex yeah. education. <laughs> I was going to say that. Actually, Just yeah. um, you know, that's that's low hanging fruit. Yeah. You haven't been introduced yet. Wait yeah. your turn. Sorry. I've just turned off his microphone by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, no, it's it's a it's a nice little living that I'll be moving on from soon. No, I actually fucking hate it. Yeah, to be hate honest. teaching children. I really do. I find it boring. Yeah. <laughs> They're not motivated learners. They don't know anything about what's going on in the world. Yeah. That's not what are good. we going to do with it them? It's terrible. You're, all, you're from all the way from Texas, USA. All, all the way from USA, Texas. Yeah. I, uh, I grew up outside of Houston. And uh, I, I actually showed Vincent uh, some photos of the cows and the chickens yeah. being born for spring and he had absolutely no interest. I thought you were showing me porn to be honest. I was going to be Yeah, yeah. Um, there was some bestiality in there but you just didn't want to you didn't want to follow through with that. The so. Vincent Valentine show does not condone bestiality. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Is that part of the contract? Sorry. It's part of the contract. <laughs> but text you're going to be leaving us in a few months. I'll be you? leaving soon. Uh, I've actually I've lived in Barcelona for three years now I'm teaching English. It's not very stimulating for me, but for others it's fine. I don't want to be too. So what are you going to be doing back home in um, Texas? No. So I'm I'm going to be uh, going to New York for a bit doing some open mics doing some comedy uh the ultimate goal i think i want to i want to be a writer write some comedy and nice. see what happens um that's that's the goal i'll be hustling and being poor in brooklyn like some of my friends so no you'll be fine yeah you're yeah. an amazing comic if you want to see uh, lucia tomorrow she's actually performing for me live at pumpish like that comedy performing at, only for vincent performing just for me at belushi's at 9 30. that's okay. my plugging for later on you're too kind right we're gonna move on to our second guest he's called alisa lee he's a bar owner of the infamous alpacas which is one of my favorite bars here in uh Bourne. He used this is a sort of what he sent to me today on Facebook about himself. He says Alison Lee is a self proclaimed failed musician, best described by his grandmother as a bad fart in the wind. Elaborate. Well, um my grandmother's point or the the failed musician The film is just I didn't know this actually. Oh that. right. Well, you know, uh, I used to have a band. Hello everyone by the way. Um <laughs> Wow, I love uh, hello. I've got a great radio voice. Um, yeah, I used to have a band in uh, when I was uh, in Argentina. Uh, relatively successful. Um, like yeah. how successful? I, this is the first time hearing of it. Uh, like we, I sold an, we sold an album in Mongolia. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> as well as Argentina, England, and so the rest of the world. But relatively is necessary. Well, yeah. There's, I mean, there's someone in Mongolia who, I mean, the name of the band was Lenny's Wife and the Boys. I think he was trying to download Lenny Lenny's Kravitz. Lenny's Wife and the Boys. Yeah. It's yeah. a good name. Yeah, is it? it? <laughs> no, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, if you don't know the context of it, though. What was the genre? Uh, rock. Rock, okay. Yeah. So are you a singer? I was a singer and guitarist, yeah. Nice one. Yeah. This is, this is news to me. I've been out with you. Well, this is why I'm now. a failed musician, because I haven't done He's it anymore. He's embarrassed, clearly. He <laughs> you would know about it. If I was still doing it, you would know about it, wouldn't you? Nice. It's failed. You, you don't sound like you're from Argentina. No, my family are from... I mean, everyone, I, was, I grew up in London. You brought, in, brought up in London, but your family are all Argentinian. Yeah. Nice one. Nice. See. Really, really good. So um, tell us more about your bar. Uh, yeah, my bar is in Bourne. It's a small little bar. Uh, if you can find it, you'll you'll like it. Definitely, uh, uh, you know, it's like any other bar. What is it we called? We serve beer. Oh, yeah. It's called Alpacas. It's alpacas. Right. Alpacas. Al, Al. People call me Al. You, oh. can, you can call me Al. Oh, I can call you Al. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, what a privilege. Hey? That's, that's why it's called Alpacas. Because, uh, because Al- my nickname was uh, Alpaca. <sighs> I thought it was because of all the pictures on the walls. I thought yeah. it was because you love furry animals like well, that Lucia too. over there. I've come to love them. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. But no, if we're, after the show today, we're going to have an after party at Alice's Bar. It's an amazing place. We're going to have quite a few people there. So feel free to come over. We're going to be there around about, about half past ten. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Alice if the door's closed, it's because I'm running there from here. Exactly. So straight after the show, Alice is going to run home to his bar open up especially for you for us for everyone for us the new you. bar sponsored by the Vincent Valentine show the, the VV show the VV show sounds like a disease so how long have you actually been here in Barcelona for? Uh, two years two years? yeah why Barcelona? because um, I thought it would be a great place if and when the uh, zombie apocalypse uh, okay <laughs> occurs well, is it because it's close be, to the sea? Be scene? honest. Show your true self. Well, uh... No, seriously, why'd you come here, zombie boy? No, seriously. <laughs> um, I came here because well, I had a friend here and I came... I was I was working in London and I kept, kept on visiting him here. And I just uh, much prefer life here than there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, London is shit. I'm from... I'm born and bred from Manchester. I it's, moved to I mean, Spain seven years ago. I lived in Malaga for six years. I moved to Barcelona last year. Spain is ten times, if not a million times, better than the UK. Well, that, that's the point. I mean, you're but from, don't you're from Texas. There. Like, I want to know why. Yeah, but you're from but, Texas. If you ask an English person why did they move to Spain, they kind of look at you like, duh, the weather. Yeah, no, but okay, so for all of my American folk okay, out there. We need to elaborate why. England is shitter than Spain. Yeah, I want to. I want to know the comparison because okay. I've actually never been. You've never I've been never to been England? to the UK at all. The UK. Okay, because like, Manchester is. Uh, it is terrible. I mean, I, I love Manchester. I love the music. I love my friends. I love my family there. It's great. But when you brought up in a city, it's the third biggest city in in, in England. It's just expensive. It's wet. It's damp. My asthma is really bad there as well. It's just. It's just. A t- it's not. There's not much going for it. Unless you got a bit of money, if you like the music scene, it's great. But I go back every every month anyway. Great music out of the yeah, UK. Really good music. But Alistair, you lived in London, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, London. To be fair, when a bit of a, every time I've been to London, it's there's loads to do there. It's a great city, but um, but like you say, you need money. You need it's money. Incredibly uh, expensive. Yeah. I mean, you if you don't have if you don't have money in London, it's the worst place in the world to be. Of course, yeah. Uh, what did you do back? Well, and I didn't. I, co- I didn't have any money, so that's why. Okay. I, mean. <laughs> so didn't I didn't do anything. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I just worked in a pub. Okay. okay. So you you didn't have any money, so you bought a bar here in yeah. in Barcelona. Yeah, exactly. So um, I mean, the bar is fantastic. It's one of my favourite bars, and I'm there every single week. Yeah. You do brilliant. It's a good s- dive bar. I mean, you're not going to go there for just one drink. Uh, it's not. I'm. Do not uh, believe that I make amazing cocktails or anything like that. I think I do. I, I disagree. You're I think I do a good amazing. job, but that's not the point. The point is, you go there, you get pissed. I think it's an. I've been there once, and it's a nice, 
casual atmosphere. And yeah, exactly. It's I think it's a I mean, great it's place it's to just meet up. Yeah. yeah, it's one of them. It's, it's a hidden gem, gem mm -hmm. of yeah. Barcelona. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is hidden, yes. And it's, it's very, very hidden. Yeah. Tell us how to get there because it is it is okay. difficult. Should I tell you how you to get, get it off of Princesa? Right. Okay, well, from Princesa we're going. I think... I think well, that's how I first should we came. Go from, should we go from Jaume that's Primero? That's how I first came. Should we go from Jaume Primero? Sure. <laughs> All right. Get out of the metro. Walk down that diagonal road until you hit a church. When you hit a church, turn left, then left again, then right, then left, then right, and then you down this alleyway. You the part that's about really repenting your follow. sins. <laughs> and, and then, and then there will be a, a light and maybe a little burning candle in the corner. Okay. <laughs> maybe. It might there be out. Go. Depends what time you turn up. Is that up. to ward off the bad spirits? Oh yeah, yeah. and um, and then there's a picture of a uh, an alpaca on the door. <laughs> did you paint that picture, by the way? No, my uh, future father-in-law did. Oh, what okay. the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> 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 it means I'm, what getting, you, I'm getting married. You're getting married yeah. to what? To what? <laughs> <laughs> an alpaca. <laughs> to no, an alpaca. His, uh, yeah. his future wife is lovely, by the way. Yeah, she's just from. Um, Holland. Holland, yeah. From Holland. Yeah, she's a really nice girl. And mm. how did you meet? Tell us that story. I like that. I'm all about love. In a bar. In a bar. <laughs> In your, your bar? Not my bar. I didn't have the bar then. Another bar. Manchester. In Manchester? Uh huh. Really? No, yeah. You met her in Manchester? Yeah. Okay, so, how long have you been together? That's so nice. A year. Okay. In a bit. And you get married? Yeah. Is it flirty? I have proposed after three weeks, mate. <gasps> really? Yeah. My parents were married after three weeks. Okay. But well, that's um, old school. That's going back in the 60s. How, so then, okay, if you... So I thought it was okay. <laughs> no, but if you proposed after three weeks, how did you know? How did you know for sure? Like, you, I don't know. You know, the old cliche, when you know, you know. She yeah, looks, yeah, yeah. She it actually applies. I'm going to tell you, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. I believe it, for sure. Once you double penetrated her, <laughs> yeah. you, she was a one. That, I mean, how did he double penetrate her? That's what I'm going to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. How was he? Was your how would he? <laughs> well, we invited a friend. Okay. <laughs> how nice. So then you moved to Barcelona together. No, no, she she moved to Barcelona. I was already here. Oh, you followed. Okay. Yeah. She followed you. Yes. How nice. So, uh, so in in June you're leaving us, Lucia. Yeah, I'll be leaving Barcelona. It's been a nice ride, it's but shame. it's uh, over. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know if I remember. I, I've suffered from really bad ADHD, so if I ask you a question twice, it means I've totally forgotten the first time. Okay, but you, you should be, be punished. Been for three years, is that right? I've, um, almost three. Almost three years. Uh, but, if I get to three... But that's why probably. are you leaving Barcelona? I'm leaving because I happen to be an illegal alien, which maybe some American listeners can and you're announcing empathize with. <laughs> I don't know. I am. Um, He's looking at the door now. See if police I, will show up. I, I, I need to go back home. I, I, my passion is not to be an English teacher at all. I know, but that's, that's the an only e very job. easy thing to do as an illegal person. Am I not supposed to talk about this? No, you're fine. Yeah, you're I'm totally fine. fine. You're totally fine. Okay, so I don't know. It's time to go back. I also found I'm really grateful for this place because it uh, allowed me to scrub, discover my passion, which is comedy. So And children. And children. <laughs> I just want to go back to the U.S. and just Make someone children. impregnate me and then another and then another. So you want to be a cum bucket, basically? Yeah, I would like <laughs> to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the, in other words, I could be that. Cum yeah, bucket. Yeah, yeah. A cum no, bucket. I just <laughs> like to have children. Yeah. Yeah. So Forever. is your boyfriend from Barcelona? Or is he? My boyfriend's from Mexico City. Oh. Yeah. So there's no hope for us. The guy from Las Cuevas. The guy from Las Cuevas, yeah. I didn't know where I thought he was from. So he's he Mexican, going with you? yeah. Is he going with you? He yeah, he'll be coming with me. Oh, but, so. but, but, we're in love. Wow. What about Donald Trump? When you know you know. When, you know, I think our love can defeat Donald. Okay. That's how much I is love he good this at, guy. Is he good at climbing over walls? <laughs> he's good. <laughs> He's good of a lot of, at a lot of things. I don't know if it goes into the. He's very good at double penetration. He's got a ladder. You double penetration of his penis and then his <laughs> other penis. His elbow and his penis. He's he would be so embarrassed if I were talking about him right now, and that, he probably he knows that I'm talking about him. But he doesn't speak much English, does he? He speaks a ton of English. Are you kidding me? 
I don't think I could. Honest, speaking honestly, I don't think I could be with someone who couldn't speak English at a really good level because because my Spanish is is okay, but um, I think the way the reason that we really connect is because he speaks really good English. He went to school in Canada. Why is that um, every time I meet Donald him, Trump hates this guy. To speak to me. No, he's, he doesn't speak to you. It was like, hey, I don't know. Maybe he gets okay. nervous. He just, he just looks at me. He's like, you know why? You know why, Vincent? Because what? he's the worst human being. No, I, I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't. Maybe he gets nervous. He's probably nervous. Yeah, but, but same. It's like I've tried. He's to speak a cutie. To him a he probably times. he gets nervous. I think. Super nervous. Oh, um, but he likes you a lot. He thinks you're the nicest guy. I've only spoke to. We him talk. A few no, but we talk about you and well, how nice you are. You, while he is, you know, orgasming, he shouts out your name. Like, I wish I spoke more to him, yeah. but I'm so nervous. No, I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we're going to have a little five-minute break now. Oh, okay. Um, and we're going to um, dive into some uh, questions about Barcelona. But All this right. is your introduction for Alice Lee and Lucia Miller, everybody. Mike, good morning. We're back again. For the second part of the Vincent Valentine show, we've just been looking at your Facebook messages and we're just figuring From out From my that, mother. Yeah, exactly. Lucia's mother's watching. And we're talking about double penetration. No. <laughs> Should we stop talking about just that? Just let her... I mean, she's probably seen it with the cows. It's fine. <laughs> Do cows double penetrate? Who knows? Maybe, like, maybe my mom is the future Jane Goodall of the cattle. Who knows? <laughs> We're at this part is of the she, show Is now. she watching my face? She's Who watching knows? Live right I now. just want to call her at this if point. If you want to see a live stream of the show, go to my Facebook profile, which is Vincent Valentine Barcelona, and you should see the show live right now. Mm -hmm. Leave us a message. But yeah, we need to stop talking about DP in front of your mother. No. Well, she, your mother... Okay, let's... My mother's listening to this. My mom. Yeah, your mom is so... Why do you have your mom on Facebook? Because I love her. But, I mean, sorry. Are we good? Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Lucy's mum. Because we're miles Did you not apart. think, when, did you get the friend request from your mum? And did you not think? Years ago. And I, I blocked her think, from a lot of things. And we, we deleted each other. And we had this kind of Did you like accept flamenco, it? Flamenco. Yeah. And, and then just be like, fuck. I'm going to go through all my photos and everything. Yeah, all these I felt that way as a teenager. But as I matured. Which you have yet to do, apparently. <laughs> no, I just don't I accept my mum's My mother Facebook. can tune into this radio show about my, where someone mentions double penetration. <laughs> She's probably asking me, asking my father what that is. She said, "Oh yeah, we've done that many times." No, no, she's <laughs> <laughs> no. This is awful. You no, want to know what that let is? Let me honey? tell you. I met Vincent's mother. Have you met her? No, I'm, she's she's great. But it, it's so, it's kind of awkward, let me tell you, because Vincent just talks about the most sexual shit in front of his mom. And I can't, like, I didn't, I was not raised, I was not raised that way. Yeah, this it's Texan. really difficult. It's, um, my mom's a sexual health nurse. Yeah, and yeah. And every time she comes to Barcelona, she gives me, like, 300 condoms, which I give away free. Okay, yeah, but I've this found is them fine. in my bar. Yeah, I give it free. Uh, it's my comedy show every Thursday in Belushi's, it's got free candy and condoms. And literally, I just hand out condoms to every participant because Pumpish does not allow STDs. Is that why in my bar I always find condoms everywhere? I give a condom to everybody. Right. We need to stop chlamydia. Okay, that, that's a really lovely thing to do, but. Chlamydia. I'm not yeah. talking about that. I'm talking about Vincent freely mentioning anal porn around his mother. Like, talking she's about fine. just whatever. She hates and, it, by um, the way. And he's like, ah, eh, ah, eh? like, elbowing me, like, ah, eh, Lucia, like, <laughs> some anal. And I'm like, oh, Mrs., I can't do this. Yeah. I can't <laughs> talk to your mother about any of that. I think my mum's told me once she tried anal once, but she didn't like it. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. It's not that's, her thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally on board she's, with you. Okay. Like, don't worry. <laughs> and, and like, no, she's totally against anal. It's like, if I tell her, oh, yeah, there's some girl, she loves anal, she, like, she needs to stop it because she's going to end up having a prolapse or something. A what? A prolapse. What, what is that? It's where your Sounds anus good. pops out. 
It's got the pro in the it. Pro, pro. Yeah. Right, you see, you've been to like <laughs> not a con. Chester, you've been to Chester Zoo, or you've been to a zoo where you see one of them baboons with that really inflamed anus. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a prolapse. A prolapse, mm. an inflamed anus. Yeah, basically, your ass comes out on itself as my uh, mom says it. Oh, when your ass falls out. Yeah, that's yeah. a prolapse. You Good. have an anus. Yeah. Oh God, you've that, never that's seen that negative. <laughs> Google it. Google it. Google prolapse. Anal prolapse onto Google. I just, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I might. Oh, that's a prolapse. No. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah, Hey, mum. She'll Google it, too. She'll Google Google. it. We're weirdly similar, even though we don't talk about these things. Right. So, Lucia, this is a question for you. What's the most weirdest thing that's happened to you here in Barcelona? The weirdest thing that's happened to me in Barcelona. Okay. Jump roll, please. Um, I don't. Okay, I don't know about like the weirdest thing ever, but recently I, I bought a bike uh, maybe like seven months ago, and my life has changed. I recommend it to anyone because you know the city better. You don't have to deal with this bullshit metro. like metro, like getting it. No, but like the temperature change. It makes just it makes yeah. you sick. To be honest, to go down and up again, the temperature change really <laughs> screws with you. I sound like my mother. Okay. <laughs> um, but I've been biking around, and the old Catalan people hate cyclists. They absolutely do um, because they think that we're full of ourselves. And I think they. The they mo- might be right. No, I, got, I gotta be honest. I think they're right. They might be right because I feel. Like, I own the sun <laughs> when I'm on a bike. Are you and one of the ones that d- ding dings it all the way through? Like, from a, you're like, you're not even have, in the way. I don't you could have go around the bell me. anymore because someone stole it off of me because Good. we live in Barcelona. But um, I was going through an intersection recently and an old man decided, no, 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 little girl, and whap punches me in the back. What? Yeah, like hard to where it really, really hurt. And I turned and looked at him and he was like, blah, blah. And I thought to myself, you will not get away with this, sir. And I followed, I, I turned around and followed him and stopped and braked right in front of him. And I said, no me pegues. <laughs> like, don't, no, my don't hit me. Oh, okay. No, like, don't hit me. Spanish prince. That's ridiculous, <laughs> like, that's assault. Yeah. yeah. Truly. And he was like, I've seen you around before and I I am not gonna stand for this anymore in Spanish. And this other guy saw this altercation happening and he he was like, Oh no, like don't don't hit her, don't mess with her. She's a girl. She's a girl, he kept her beating. And I was like, this is this is ridiculous. But really that guy, like, I will remember his face forever. Because he hit me, <laughs> like a man hit me on the street. He in the back. You in the street. In the back. In the yeah. back. In the back. Did, in the, are you saying back. it's okay because it was in the back? Well, no, I'm not saying it's okay. But I've got a weak one. Fisting isn't cool, especially in your back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your mum's listening. I'm so aware that she's here. <laughs> I feel my mother's presence. I, I know, that's tough, but... I mean, I I do agree with them with the cyclists. To hit, to no hit? cyclists in in Barcelona. Ah, that they have. In fact, everywhere we have a cycle lane over here. Yeah, yeah, and no, we have but no so one uses many. it. Actually, it's really great. But it's, I it's, do. Oh I no, no, no. Hey, lane. people in the cycle lanes are fine. It's the other ones who fucking ding ding their way around. You know, like they're just like pedaling their ass off, going down a pedestrian street, and just like bing 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 bing. And like, no, if they're on the sidewalk. You. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get yeah, that. Yeah, foot there. No. Exactly. I'll punch them in the back. (laughs) (laughs) Just, I don't know. There's something about. I think think I'd punch them. I would just clothesline them. No, but it's not that. Is there something about like old Catalan men? And I hate to say this. They just feel like they can shout whatever they want. And then it came to hitting me, like actually punching a young. And I don't mean to. You're, you're young be like sexist. sexist at all like because I, I'm quite feminist but like this guy like what a young girl you're gonna punch her really yeah. for for just going through the yeah what were you doing she was topless <laughs> what, by were, you doing what were you doing wrong, wrong? exactly okay, no, now no. we get to it yeah. so yeah, yeah. this is what I was doing no. <laughs> she I, was um, I just stole his wallet no, I was going through a uh, <laughs> way but I was in the bike lane 
and it was yellow for the bikes and it had just turned red. I was going very, very slowly through the pedestrian lane. The red light. It was red, you're right. <laughs> okay. I should be shamed. Yeah. I've been shouted a few times because I don't cycle, I longboard through the city. But in August here in Barcelona, it is yeah because really you're a cool guy. Everyone yeah. hates no. everyone hates longboarders because no, you're just this cool. Exactly, I love longboarding, especially in the cycle lanes. But yeah. I do it topless. Okay, and, and, uh, you're acting like you have breasts. No, it's exactly men so can <laughs> topless. Mm. No, I do it topless. Yeah. It's like maybe a if you did it topless, you wouldn't get punched in the back. <laughs> okay, yeah. you probably get fitted <laughs> in the back. It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, it's like a few times, um, I didn't know the law here in Barcelona, but I'd go around topless on my longboard. And Same, I would get, wait, and I would Vincent, get old say guys shirtless. Scoop. Shirtless? Topless. Topless implies that you have breasts. Okay. Like yeah, I've got to agree with her on that again. I ran around Galores, I had people screaming at me like, get your top on in Spanish. And it's kind of like, no. But then I realized like a month later that it, I could actually get stopped by the police and get fined 50 euros. Mm-hmm. For being shirtless yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah. in public, but for me, I just thought, well, it's a stunning. You no, know, so every time I go topless, shirtless, longboarding, and I see a police car, I quickly put my t-shirt on. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So the law the just yeah, the law only applies to you in front of the police. Yeah, but the police here are so relaxed. You have to admit, they're, why, they're topless. Why is like the shirt? Why do you need to be topless? Let's get to the the psychology behind you needing to be shirtless when you longboard. Because it's so sweaty. Okay. And it's kind of like the breeze against a man's chest when you're going downhill is amazing. You like that, yeah. Yeah, it's different. But yeah, I learned the hard way. I put my the skimpiest t-shirt on uh, possible. You can and get, like, a little fishnet. Are you wearing a beanie on. at the same time? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's completely defeating the object of, like, staying beanie. cool. Yeah, so I've got these, like, red... They're, like, uh, David... <laughs> You've got Sloss. a big woolly hat on. You're like, I take my shirt off because it's hot and sweaty, and you, but you wear a big woolly hat. True. And I've got, like, a Des- David Makes Hasselhoff's, no sense. like, uh, red skimpy shorts. Nice. Topless with a beanie hat on. And Very I good. wonder why people I want to see that photo. You'll see it, don't worry. You'll see it before I'll you leave I'll forward it to my mother. Yeah. <laughs> She's watching you right now. <laughs> Probably not anymore. So, Alice, uh, the, weirdest stuff, the weirdest thing that's happened to you here in Barcelona? Um, <laughs> this right. Yeah, don't yeah. Mm, um, okay. Weirdest thing. Well, just a strange, strange interaction with a, with a Catalonian man as well. Uh, some guy came into my bar one night. Uh, there was no one there; it's just me. And uh, and he sits at the bar, and he's gonna have a he's gonna have a beer. And uh, and obviously, there's only one person there, so you feel obliged to talk to him. And he's and he's talking to me. And some and and basically, I mean, long story short, he was trying to justify why it was totally acceptable and okay for him to just come round the back of the bar and give me a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> hand job behind your bar oh yeah he, he said well, he was talking about Barcelona being the city of sex uh, which you know, he's like he's like everyone here there, everyone, everywhere you go every bathroom you go people are fucking people are this, people are having sex everywhere everywhere all over the place I've people come here you just to have sex you haven't noticed well exactly I was like well yeah, yeah it's not really like that but um, anyway and then he um and then he's like, hey, and so he was. This is how he was justifying it. Everyone's having sex everywhere. I could come round the behind the bar and give you a hand job. I was like, mm, no, you couldn't. But <laughs> uh, and but then you know, and I, and I thought, I thought maybe he was just trying to make a point at first. But when he repeated it and repeated it and repeated it, and then as he kept on repeating this, I could just come over there and you know suck you off. And then with little hand gestures, as I was washed, doing some glasses or something, he'd be like. Uh, you know, sorry, radio listeners. Uh, <laughs> he'd basically have his fist next to his mouth and sort of be implying my cock was in it. He was fisting his mouth. He was just very gently being like, yeah. "You want some?" Good lord! And yeah, and I was on my own. <laughs> you were you were alone at the bar with this man. Yeah. Oh, that's yikes! You know what it's like to be a woman. <laughs> no, oh. seriously. Oh, Grape. yikes! Grape. Grape. <laughs> 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 that's what it is. So that's, uh, oh, that's awful. Um, great memes. 
Yeah, no, well, that's what we get all the time. I don't mean to turn it that. Keep going with your well, little, I mean, your little man story. But no, like, no, I mean, good I mean, God, that's every that day. is a story. But fine. I mean, yeah, I suppose maybe I do know what it's like to be a woman. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I, it wasn't gonna. Ha- I wasn't that scared. It wasn't as good. No, I wasn't that scared. As scared, yeah. So you didn't you cock out and just... He didn't. No, you know the, you know what the worrying thing is, and I really hope my the ex person who owns the, that bar um, isn't listening. But the because this is he's done that twice. So he's he came in when I first opened the bar, and then he came in about six months later, and he and I changed the bar a bit. So he thought it was like this new owner. So the first time, new owner goes and tries his luck. Second time, because the bar had been changed up a bit, comes in, tries his luck again on me. He'd forgotten he'd already, he'd forgotten he'd already tried this. But the first time, he was like, he's like, yeah, I used to, I used to come here quite a bit. And so I was, I was like, so you used to come around here and give the old owner a hand job all the time. For free drinks, basically. Well, I don't know if it was for free drinks. It was just, you know. Free something. Pleasure. Okay. It was definitely something swallowing something, but good lord! I know that is pretty messed up. It's like if I owned a bar and someone did that to me, I'd be like, mm, "Is anyone watching?" Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've washed myself. I mean, you know, it's crossed my mind. I'd, it'd be good if it was a female, but yeah, definitely yeah. male. Yeah, I would never do that. I mean, it's a hand job, isn't it? Yeah, Doesn't matter if it's a female eyes. hand or a male hand, does it? Just close your eyes and just pretend it's a female. I mean, he made a point. What did he say? No one would know. Yeah. I mean, so... Start I mean, spreading the news. Yeah. <laughs> the Vincent <laughs> Valentine Show. Oh, the new jingle. The Vincent Valentine <laughs> Show. That was pretty good. Wow. Yeah, so Lucia... Quite um, a dynamic duet. Exactly. I need to record this for the future jingle. Yeah. But we are going to do a second part to the show. For, uh, from next week, we're going to do a live studio audience. Okay. Because uh, right now we're locked upstairs in some secluded room. It's getting yeah. warm, and especially yet, after that and story. And yet I feel so exposed because exactly. we're being videoed. Because your mum's watching. Because maybe week, not anymore, hopefully not. Love you. Downstairs, we're going to have a we're fit about 15, 20 people in there, and we're, we're going to have to do a live Looks show. Looks like they're eating Thai food. Are they eating Thai food? Vincent, also? where's our Thai food? You Are we getting paid for this? I think San not. Miguel right now. Uh, San Miguel. <laughs> How San much Miguel. did this cost? It's like two yo-yos <gasps> each, I think it is. Huh? What, one two years? Se- 145, actually. 145. Oh, I got ripped off. Then. Fancy. Yeah. The luxury. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beers are much more expensive in my bar. A lot more expensive, which we're going to head What's your later. specialty? What do you love? Definitely not plugging my bar. Oh, yikes. <laughs> What's your speciality? What's my speciality? Oh, at the bar. Speci- Apart from, oh, that's a different chili story. Did you say chili specialty? Bomb. Yikes. Right. Alistair used to have a chili bum at his I've place. got it. I've got it now. You got oh. it by now? Yeah. Well, I've, yeah. Well, Explain the story about the electricity. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got a fridge that's a bit temperamental at the bar and um, keeps on giving me electric shocks. And, um... <laughs> And, and you know, and it gives other people electric shocks, and I just tell them to stop being a pussy. Uh, but and uh, and I have my I have this drink that I kind of hang like hanging on the wall, you know, like a kind of little barrel that you can let the you know the little tap like, on yeah, the yeah, little tap, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, and I was just trying to f- fix uh, this electricity problem whilst I was telling everyone else to stop being a pussy, and I just grabbed the fridge two hands. And it gave me such a bad electric shock. I'm flying into the wall and smashed this barrel. And that's why I don't have any chilli bomb, but I've got it back now. You got it back. A yeah. chilli bomb? Yeah, chilli bomb. Basically, it's just, is it vodka? It's, yeah, it's my homemade uh, vodka infused with chilies. Okay. It's, it's pretty hardcore. So yeah, you, you just spicy. let the chilies sit in the vodka? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, there's more to it than that. Weeks. Okay. It's you're a little more complicated to, to be a bartender. <laughs> you love one you add it with You add Red Bull. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but it's more complicated Didn't think than of that. that. Curveball. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lucia, the only reason why I've started comedy here last year was because you and Andy had your comedy show, had and our I comedy lost my show. comedy virginity with you, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I remember that night. We you... we let you on so generous, so generous of us. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's just literally, um, I watch you guys do an amazing show like you normally did, and uh, did a comedy. Was it amazing? It was or were brilliant. we struggling? Yeah. Was it good? It was really good. It was still yeah, good. no, yeah. it was. It was such a fun time. Yeah. yeah. 
It was great. It was mm-hmm. really, really good. And mm-hmm. I remember doing, getting up on stage for the first time, being so drunk. Mm-hmm. So back, yeah. background story for people that okay, yeah. don't know what we're talking about. Uh, me and um, my friend Andy, we started a open mic comedy here in Barcelona. And comedy was just kind of debt, kind of like paddling along Isn't, a little bit. Yeah, like there was suck, here, was there was BCC, but it's not, wasn't really doing its thing and so we started this little uh, alternative show where we had like anyone do an open mic and it really I think it I mean it changed both of our lives for sure and then like so many people were interested it was such a nice space and so we had people like Vincent who now is like blowing up in Barcelona doing these social events and doing radio doing comedy doing just everything and People who, on Sunday, there's a comedy show, and they started with us doing open mics. It's it's so fun. It's so fun to see kind of the English scene blow up here. No, it's definitely, it's like it's right now, because obviously you're, I not love doing, it. you're not doing the shows anymore, but it's kind of like, it was amazing. You had a great community. Yeah, And made loads of new friends, and it opened new doors to me. Really and did. people now, and it's kind of like the scene after one year mm-hmm. is kind of going crazy right now. Yeah. And it's the opportunities for everybody is, is amazing. It's like, if you want to perform for one of my Thursday shows, give me a shout after yeah. the show. No, come over and do open mic. We had two open new open micers last week, actually. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that's really my well. favorite part yeah. is like having new people come in and try it for the first time because everyone is like, man, you sit there in the audience and you're like, I could be funnier. Exactly. But then you get up there and you're like, holy it is shit, hard. this is the most terrifying thing I've ever done and everyone is judging me. Um, but you kind of get over that hump and you're more comfortable and it's it's it really is therapy and I know that's so cliche it's to therapy, say. It's therapy, but at the same time, it's good for confidence and it's good for bringing people. In out, in yeah. that way, though, I think um, I think a lot of people are kind of alone with their own thoughts and thinking that, oh man, no one thinks this way and I'm so stupid. But it's great. At the end, yeah. like you you feel accepted when you get that laugh. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We're gonna have another little break now and we're gonna All be right. in the second part of the show. If you got any questions for Alistair. Or Lucia, or even myself, send them to the, 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 uh, the live feed on Facebook right now, and we'll answer your questions. Pump. The Vincent Valentine, Valentine Show. Pompage. <laughs> Pompage. 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 If you're from Spain. <laughs> I like that. So we're on the last part of the show now, so it's just a free for all. We've asked for some questions. We have a guy called uh, Michael Colville from uh, Ben Almadena. He's asking, why are there too many Jews in the world? Why are there too what? Too many Jews in the world. I, I don't understand what his question disagree is. disagree with that. I know. Too, that's horrible. I know, Anti-Semitic yeah. To be Shit. fair, Ben Almadena is where I'm from. Who said this? Who it is was, this? Uh, some guy, he's called Michael Colville. Michael Corbell, you need to learn what yeah. it is to be a decent human being. Uh, no. I don't know if he was being racist. To read so it. No. He's being okay. anti-Semitic <laughs> a little bit with his little Jew speak. Yeah. Yikes. I think there's some comments going on. Yeah. I can't. No, there definitely is some <laughs> script. Yeah, someone. No one too likes many Michael. Jews? That's not a thing. I, yeah. Why aren't there enough Jews? We That's how Jewish I feel. People. We love Jewish people. I do. There's I'm nothing a fan. wrong with Jews. So I don't understand nothing this wrong but that was the with... only question we got. Oh, so we have to address it? So we have, we to, have address to address it. this Why horrible question because that we received. Because the terrorists asked a better question. aren't doing a good job. Exactly. Well, in, in our third episode, in two weeks, we have a girl called Jamie Lynn, and she's Jewish, and she's from New York. Yeah. So we can answer <laughs> the question... Yeah, she's alive. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're gonna <laughs> Should we save that question for next week? To Michael Colville in Ben Almadena. Okay. We'll answer that. We'll, we'll answer yeah, that Jamie Lerner's a fantastic person. I don't even know why I'm addressing this. Yeah. It makes me feel like I'm dumbing myself down, uh, from to Texas. be honest. I'm from Texas, but that doesn't mean shit in terms of this. Like, this is outrageous. I know we're stereotypically bigoted as hell, but... <laughs> This is outrageous. Anyway. Um, All right, no one likes Michael. No one likes yeah. Michael. Yeah, boo, Michael. Why aren't there? Why are there so many Michaels in the world? Exactly. Boom. 
Um, Roasted. <laughs> we're going to talk about. We're going to talk now. It's the last part of the show. We're going to talk about just something random, something what I talk about a lot. But it's your worst sexual experiences in general. My first one. Your first one. Go on. What well, in all of them? Well, just explain. You mean the story where I nearly got my mum pregnant? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alice nearly got his mum pregnant. No, I didn't. I thought I could potentially... Okay. It was the first time I masturbated. And? It was in the bathtub. Is to a photo of your mother? No. <laughs> um, what? No, I was masturbating. And, you know, and the first time I ever came... Yeah. It was in the bathtub. And as I came, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. I'm going to do that a Let lot. Let me ask you a question. Did you full-on masturbate, like, with the hand going up and down? Because many a man that I speak to... His first experience of coming is like he rubbed up against something and he's like, oh, oh, fuck. And then he falls asleep. No, 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 no. Seriously. I'm, I'm not kidding. You've not been with the right guys, Lucy. Um, uh, no, I, def- I definitely had a... I definitely was at it for a full 30 minutes is Alistair's response. I, yeah. Okay. I hired someone. To you... <laughs> Um, okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was in a. I was in. I was in the bathtub. You know, splashing around, and um, <clears throat> so much splashing. So much splashing because you can't arch your back out of the water enough to like. Yeah. There's too much splashing when you're in the water, but if you arch your back out, and then it's just becomes a bit too uh, uncomfortable, so you go back in the water. Anyway, never mind. I came in the water, and then my mum like shouts from outside in her in. The, you know, Argentine accent. It's like, Alice, there, leave the water. I'm going to have a bath after you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm like a 13, 14 year old boy. So I don't understand. And I thought, holy fucking shit, I'm going to get my mum pregnant. So I just pulled out the plug in the water and I was just like trying to get it away. <laughs> and um, <laughs> How would you feel if you did if I got my mum pregnant? pregnant? Wow. Can you imagine her jumping in a bath with all your? Well, can you imagine all the? Can you imagine all the consequences? I mean, it would probably my parents would probably get divorced because my dad would be like, "That's that wasn't me. Like we didn't have sex, so you're cheating on me." You and like, and my mum wouldn't son. know. My mum would think it's like baby Jesus. <laughs> Because you wouldn't know. No, she hasn't but your sex. parents were. They weren't sexually active. Then my. How parents. do you know that? Because I know that. It's no double are you are you certain? Yeah, through denial. Through denial. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you heard your parents. No, I think it would have worked out. Okay, honestly, if we if we look at this as it really is, it would have worked seamlessly because you have both your dad and your mom's genes you would mix that with your mom's genes no one would know the difference your parents were definitely having sex okay because and then i have a down syndrome little brother (laughs) (laughs) i don't know that's so weird also that's a myth it would never happen actually if we realistically look at this it would never happen down syndrome, brother. No, no, no. The, f- <laughs> the fact that your leftover teenage semen would impregnate your mother in the bathtub, it well, wouldn't happen. Well, I didn't know that. Because it has to be under a certain temperature. It could yeah. have been the perfect temperature. Exactly. How do you know I wasn't having a lukewarm bath? Oh. I don't know if you've ever come in a bath before. But it gets everywhere. It sticks to your head. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh. And, it, and, it, and it almost... I mean, that, that's what I thought when I was younger. I thought it was swimming towards something to cling on to. But it's just the nature of the water that's like, spinning around. It obviously, it just it, it will it stick to you. But I thought, like, if you put your foot in there, then the cum, it will like, come to you. It will come to yeah. your foot. And it, will, and it will cling to you. Good Lord. Lucia, do you have any weird and fucked up sexual stories? Is your mum still here? Oh, I'm so upset about it. Um... I can... Hi, Mum. <laughs> Hi. No, I can't. I can't when I know... No, I mean, I'll... No, because, okay, I'll talk <laughs> about a this. Bad one, a I'll bad tell one. I'll tell something that she knows about, which which is sexual, is when I went to the... You, you think this is totally boring, but I went to the gynecologist before I left for Barcelona, and I was like, I need to be... Tested oh, yeah. for all these for everything, because that's the healthy 
thing to do. You should be tested. You did it let's, right. Let's put a good word out on this station. And my mom at some point was like, well, why are you so insistent about being tested? And I said, well, I got to I got to do it. And she goes, why? Why do you feel that way if you've never had sex? <laughs> And I was about 22 at the time, and I told her, well, because I have. And it was a big deal. So this is why it's weird, because we have a weird relationship about... How how could your mother really honestly believe that by 22 you hadn't had sex? Because... In this day and age. You're in Texas. I don't know. It's like deep denial. It's also also, uh, kind of... Were you a complete geek or nerd at school or something, or...? I was, uh, was a sexy geek. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like it, it doesn't. It's it's just like a weird. Um, I don't know. You just get brought up a certain way, and you have a certain relationship with your parents, and maybe it doesn't have to do. Like a lot of my friends that I met in college had this very like open sexual relationship with their parents. <laughs> Not like that, but like they they would tell them about things and we just we just didn't and it was fine um and i don't know i told her that and it, i kind of felt liberated but at the same time she was crying and i was like oh, chill out chill out it's fine um when did you get the chat? i don't know we just lead very different lives because my mom met my dad in high school yeah yeah so or maybe even yeah in high school they started dating so that's that's a different it's a different life than you led so, and that I led. Oh, like, you're, you're like, probably only slept with one guy. Yeah, definitely. And it, it like, mm. I was... No, 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 but, like, mm. I kind of... But maybe not. <laughs> but, but kind of... I don't know. She... They met in, in high school, and then they dated all through, and then when they graduated from college, they married each other. That's good. That's an old school. It's... Old school and it's beautiful, yeah. and I just never, I didn't do that. And it's, it's like the movie The Notebook, isn't it? It's kind of like it's all like this old-fashioned story, mm-hmm. never been penetrated. I, and then they live happily ever I don't know after. if my mom would include that in her romantic <laughs> story. No, I was, I wasn't penetrated until him. No, no, no. I but you know, it's a really thing. It is a thing that I respected, and it, when I was in, when I was in high school, I wanted that. So you have no idea how so badly wanted I wanted that. Huh? You wanted a D so much. No, I wanted him. <laughs> oh, I wanted the dude. No, I, I wanted the fairy tale so badly. And yeah. then I, it just didn't end up that way. And so whenever we didn't, when that didn't happen for me. Um, you moved on to the next. No, like I, I, you know, you moved to Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 Barcelona. I don't know. I mean, penetration is different. everywhere, apparently. Yeah. No. According I, to that guy. <laughs> In every bathroom, every corner, every nook and cranny, people <laughs> are having sex. You said before, it's like bathrooms. Yeah, Vinny, it would be perfectly acceptable for me to go over there and give you a handjob. Okay, I'm you sorry. You want to give me a handjob? Well, I mean, I'm just saying it would be perfectly acceptable. I don't think I, I've not. Watched no one myself. would know except for her and all the listeners. Yeah, but I think no, but he's so you're so appalled by his handjob story. Am I taking this to a serious? No, no, no. Okay, but let me tell you, walking in the streets of Barcelona. You, as a woman, you're soup. You're harassed for That's sure. That's Ravalo, isn't it? No, don't don't isolate it to a certain zone. Yeah. Actually, I'll say the whole world is it, is walking it? around like you're fucked with for sure. And the other, I'll get. I'll tell you a story. I was walking down. Okay, so I was walking down Ample, which you know, and it's in uh, Gotico. And so I'm walking down, and this guy was like, "Hey, hey, 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 hey," hey. and he just starts running at me running at me and i was like holy crap like wanting to like doing sexual gestures like pumping you basically really pumpaging me (laughs) which i don't want to put your your business in a negative light and i had to run and this isn't daylight like this is people watching this harassment like innocent bystanders like i'm not gonna act whatever okay 